Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about dungeon mastering and how dungeon mastering is, uh, it really impacts our lives in a pretty meaningful way, and it really doesn't leave, it, it doesn't leave any corner of our lives untouched, and I'm starting to understand this even more deeply. So, I, I saw this great film, Elvis 2022, I highly recommend the film. Uh, I would say it's a four out of five star film, um, really, really great film and, and, and totally worth every minute of your time um, but when I was seeing it you know immediately my brain you know there's exciting parts and then there's kind of low key parts and in the low key parts I was thinking okay so what, what does this mean for my game right like what does this mean for my Dungeons and Dragons campaign right now right um, is there any you know so I'm watching and, and I thought to myself okay I'm watching a movie but you know is this telling me how to craft a story, or is this telling me not how, how to how to not craft a story? Am I engaged? Yes, I was extremely engaged by this film, right? So I can take away things of this is how you craft a story, right? Like this is a good tool for crafting a story. Um, and the, the parts where I'm not engaged, I'm like, what is the director failing to do here? You know, so that I will learn from this, and then my stories will be gay engaging all the way through, right? Then I, I was also watching this incredible actor. I don't, I don't know the actor. I've never seen him in anything else. Um, but this incredible actor who portrayed Elvis did a really good job with it. And I was thinking, you know, he's pouring himself into this role. I have these player characters at at the table. Are my players, are they method? You know, are they method players? Are they character players, right? Or are they self-players? Like, here, I'll give you a good example. Like, um... um I think Christian Bale is a, actually, if you watch The Machinist, you will see it. Uh, he is a method actor, right? And then a good a good example of a character actor is uh, Reese Darby. He's one of my favorite actors. But he can play different characters, right? He has a lot of range, right? And then there's self-actors, right? So uh, that's a perfect example. This is John Malkovich. John Malkovich is never anybody but John Malkovich in any movie, right? He doesn't have any range. But you love to see him. Like, he's, he's been... He's had a whole bunch of great acting roles. He's just a self-actor. So I was thinking to myself, you know, are my player characters... Are my players... Are they... Are they method players? Are they character players? Are they self-players? Do I need to need start adjusting my dungeon mastering for each one? And I was just... And... and Everything kind of dropped in the slot, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to think about how do I process movies, right? But then I'm like, nah, 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 I'm like, okay, you're seeing the leaves, but you're not seeing the forest. And I, I feel like, you know, before I dive into, you know, the subject of, you know, how does a dungeon master come to movies? You know, first, I want to say this, like, nothing is untouched, right? A regular muggle person, a person who doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons, has a shriveled, desiccated life compared to a Dungeons and Dragons player or a, uh, compared to a dungeon master, right? Who just lives in one solitary, you know, like you hear people like terrible things happen, like self delete, right? I, I, I couldn't tell you. I've never, I've never met a dungeon master in my life who chose to self delete. Why would they, right? There's a thousand worlds left, left to, uh, left to explore, right? It's, it's a Dungeons and Dragons in my humble opinion is a war against death, many different kinds, right? It's just so powerful, right? And you you can't, like, if you're a dungeon master, you can't let go, right? Because you're like, no, there's like a hundred more, you know, I want to see a hundred more worlds. I want to create a thousand more, you know, people. I want to inhabit them and, and craft these worlds and these stories. And it's just, who could ever self-delete from that? You know, it's just, it's, to me, it's unthinkable, Right? Whereas if you're you know, stuck in one world, right, and you have no control and you can't craft and create worlds, and you look at your life and you can't affect anything, right, you don't control the weather, you don't, you know, you don't uh, think about the economics and all, you, of course, like, you could end up there, right, but with, to me, if you're a dungeon master, you could never end up there, right, because there's always something more to, to explore and, frankly, to control, right, you have... Dungeon mastering gives you a level of control that I don't I don't know anything else that does. It's just so powerful, right? But once you commit to dungeon mastering, nothing you ever experience, nothing you encounter is separate. It all goes through, you know, okay, what does this mean for me, IRL? What does this mean for the people I know, IRL, right? 
But what does it mean for my non-player characters? What does it mean for my player characters? What does it mean in this world, this world, this world? What does it mean in worlds that haven't even been shipped, haven't even reached the table, but are here in my head, are here in my heart, right? It's so, it's so incredible, right? And so we just talked about movies, but everything can go through this filter, right? When you encounter a new meal, right? When you eat, when you taste something you've never tasted before, right? You can you can bring that experience to other people at the table. You can multiply it. It's incredible, right? And what's even more incredible is that ability to multiply experiences across other people who haven't had those experiences. It is completely unhinged, right? It's freed from economics, right? And class struggles and it's incredible. It is just so powerful. And so the exercise you do, right? You know, I, I've been working on my lightsaber skills recently. But that comes from my desire to understand my fighter's, um, you know, proficiency with the longsword, right? And as I grow in skill with my lightsaber, I understand what my fighters are going through more, right? My fighter non-player characters, my fighter player characters, right? And there's just no area of life, once you commit to dungeon mastery, it allows every single encounter you meet, you, you have, to be multiplied, right? You can think about it from that small sliver, right? Which I think is increasingly unimportant, that IRL sliver, right? Um, and uh, for yourself and for those around you. But then there's this this dungeon master sliver that, you know, it, and it, it's how much of the pie is it? How much of the pie is it? Right? And we all get to make up that decision for ourselves and we should never neglect. Right? You know, I'm a husband and a father. You know, Christian husband, father, dungeon master. That's, that's the platform, right? I have to put, you know, I have to put my Christian and in that order, right? God before anyone, my wife before my children, my children before the rest of the world, and then Dungeon Master, right? And it, the Dungeon Master role means that every experience I have, it's not trapped with me, right? The next time I'm at the table, something that was profound and meaningful and jo or joyful or sorrowful can be handed over like a gem to another human being. Once we commit to being a dungeon master, nothing is the same ever again. It's just so powerful. That's my opinion. What's yours? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.